else, knitting. I will also be talking about yarn and fiber and all things knitting related and maybe not so knitting related. Uh, so if you don't know me already, my name is Kristen Janik. I am a semi-retired knitting pattern designer, a knitting instructor, and an all-around knitting enthusiast. Uh, I am podcasting to you from the Maryland suburbs of Washington, D.C., where I live with my husband, a very tall man from Peru, and my two children, JJ, who is eight, and Ollie, who is just one month away from turning seven. Uh, when I'm not knitting, I also enjoy watching Orioles baseball, baking, gardening, and drinking wine, but it's mostly about the knitting, so let's go ahead and start talking about it. All right, we'll do a quick screenshot today. I am actually wearing something knit, even though it is the summertime. This is my Open Edge Tea, a pattern from Jessie Mae Martinson, Jessie Mae Designs. Um, if you've watched previous episodes of the podcast, you know that my Open Edge Tea does not have any sleeves because I ran out of yarn. Um, I tested this for Jessie Mae a couple of months ago now, and it is in heavy rotation in my summer wardrobe. Um, it's still a little big. It can, you know, sometimes it's like an 80s, like one shoulder <laughs> kind of thing. Um, but it is very comfortable, very cool. And uh, I am so happy to have it in my wardrobe. She has another similar pattern, uh, the Outline Tee. I had also tested the Outline Tank, um, which I really like, but because of some inability to count on my part, um, my Outline Tank is a little bit lopsided and I really have not been wearing it very much. Um, so I really am planning to also do the Outline Tee one of these days when I have time. I did order some yarn for it, but uh, that is another story for another time. So that is all of the knitwear that I am wearing today. It is of course July and very, very hot. So other than this uh, linen t-shirt, I have not been wearing any knitwear whatsoever. So I have um, a few things to show you that I have been working on. Nothing really off the needles. Um, I did finish my not Front Crop by Carrie Knits, and you can check out the latest Finish Fix Frog vlog if you want more details about that. I will link it uh, right up here. Um, that was an ongoing whip that I had finally gotten off the needles as part of my 2021 project to finish Fix or Frog all of my existing whips. Um, so other than that, I have not finished anything, but I have made some good progress on some things. Um, and I have also started a new project. <laughs> oh, what to talk about first. Um, so this is my, this doesn't belong with this. This is my Ridgeview Tea, which is another uh, pattern by Carrie Bloomer, Carrie Knits. And I have kind of not really been putting much work into this because I have a problem. Um, I bought, this is the back, uh, getting a little wrinkled, but this is the back and this is the sleeve. It's just a short little cap sleeve. So you can see it is getting close to being done. I probably need another inch maybe. Um, but the problem is that I ordered four balls of this yarn for this project and I've already used two complete ones. Uh, and I'm not done the back yet. And um, let's see if I can share a photo of it. The back and the front really um, don't have much of a difference between them. So you can see it's the, the neck is very high on the front. It's not like there's a real big V-neck or anything that's gonna take away um, yarn use in the front. So the front and the back are going to use about the same amount of yarn and I have already used um, more than half my yarn that I bought. I don't want <laughs> to buy any more yarn. Um, there's nothing wrong with the yarn, but I want to be able to finish this project with the yarn I have. Um, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I might try modifying the front neck. Um, you know, but the thing is that this, this standout kind of 
garter stitch filled in v-neck is a real major part of the pattern. I don't really want to change that too much. Um, so I just kind of put this on hold and really have not put much work into it lately at all because I'm very undecided on how I want to handle that. Um, which is annoying uh, because this is you know definitely something I could wear kind of in the early fall. This is a wool cotton blend yarn. Um, it's obviously short sleeves. Um, so there's that and I am now wishing that I had opted to make the more cropped version of this so that I would have more yarn. And perhaps that is why I don't have enough yarn because maybe I bought yarn for the more cropped version and then changed my mind as I was knitting. I'm just not sure. Um, but definitely something is gonna have to be modified in order for me to finish that project with the yarn I have. So that is just kind of on hold. And that is for my Make 9 2021 which um, I need to get moving on. The other project that has been getting most of my attention um, is the new sample for my Going Steady cardigan. So I have finished the body and that includes the lining for the pockets. I just went and did that right away because I knew I would get annoyed if I had to do it later. Uh, so now what I need to do is do the sleeves. Um, is sort of where more of the fun part comes in and then do the big collar that goes uh, comes all the way up from the bottom around the neck and down the other side i have started one of the sleeves and the sleeves are knit in you can see it here because it's a raglan reverse stockinette um but i don't want to knit an entire sleeve net let alone two in reverse stockinette so i'm just turning my sweater inside out and working the sleeves in stockinette on the wrong side. So, um, the sleeves have these big color block stripes um, because this design was inspired by kind of like the high school jock letterman sweater from the 50s um, and those usually had like school colors. Um, so this has three big color block stripes on the sleeves and it looks me in the stockinette but when you turn it inside out which is going to be the right side you get these little um kind of thin mini stripes where the two colors come together and that's what how you stripes look on reverse stockinette so um i really like that look and that's why the sleeves are in reverse stockinette but again i don't want to knit two sleeves and reverse stockinette. So I am just working from the wrong side uh, and doing stockinette. So what I have for this, the whole, the whole body's in this light gray. And then for my stripes, I wanted something really kind of wearable and goes with everything. So I've got one uh, cake of this dark gray, and this is the same yarn as the body, this uh, Knit Pick Simply Wool Worsted. And then I have this other ball and this is a Magpie Fibers Nest Worsted, um, which in terms of the feel, they even look very similar. Um, and I only bought, for whatever reason, one skein of this yarn. I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with it, but I thought it would go really nicely in this project for the stripes. So the each sleeve has three big stripes, two in one contrast color and a third in um, the other two contrast color. So what I'm going to do is use the magpie fibers for the two stripes on each sleeve. And then we'll use this for the middle stripe on each sleeve. And then also we'll use this to trim the pockets on the front, maybe knit uh, the cuffs on the sleeves if I have enough left over. Um, but just like a, a nice thing about this pattern, it is a pretty straightforward raglan with pockets, with these color block stripes. Um, the only, you know, kind of tricky part is maybe the, the shawl collar if you're not a, you know, 
not great at short rows or don't like short rows. Um, but you can really play with the color. I mean, you could do it all one color if you wanted. You could add more stripes. You can just kind of mix it up. So my plan is to use these for the stripes and then see, you know, what's left. Um, I might add a stripe to the shawl collar. We'll just see how it works out. I really need to get moving on this though, because this is supposed to be, um, this is an update to my going steady pattern, which I've added a bunch, uh, three or three more, four more sizes to. Um, and the original yarn has been discontinued. The dyer is out of business. So I decided to make a new sample as well. Um, and I have said that I'm going to republish it in July, and today is July 14th, and um, I need to get this done and photographed um, by the end of the month. And uh, so that doesn't give me a ton of time. Another another good reason for knitting the sleeves uh, inside out in stockinette. It will certainly go faster than if I were to try to knit them. Um, in reverse stockinette, but for those who don't mind lots of purling, do it that way too. So those are two major things I've been working on. I have started, and most of my you know finish fix frog stuff is going in the finish fix frog vlogs, but I will give you guys just a peek at the next whip that I'm working on, which is my Desk chain, the chain, whatever, however it's pronounced, uh, by Layla Raven. Um, I am, let me think, almost, yeah, um, I need to work four repeats of this feather and fan or shale pattern or whatever you want to call it. And I'm like halfway through the fourth repeat. And then the rest of the sweater is basically just stuck in that. Um, so, that uh, is moving fast. That is moving faster than I thought it would, um, and I'm have high hopes about maybe being able to wear that in August. Um, I have been putting some time in to a design that I am working on that I have to keep top secret. Um, I did finish the test knit that I was working on, um, but that also has to stay top secret. Um, Soon I'm gonna start working on another design that does not have to be top secret and I'll be able to show you guys that. Um, but a lot of stuff that I'm working on is garments um, and I really wanted kind of a, a quick fix, something that was gonna get finished up quickly and, and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of an instant gratification project, not instant, but uh, something quicker. So I saw on Instagram, that Taylor Owen and Taylor also has a lovely podcast and I will do that linky thing here so you can hop over and check that out uh, and Taylor is also in Baltimore so she's nearby um, on Instagram she was looking for testers for this just really cute little bralette and um, this is knit in a DK weight it's you know lots of cables which I love I'm a big fan of cables you see another, another photo on the back um, and it, um, she used Magpie Fibers Swanky DK, which I already happen to have, so I decided to use that. And I've just started this. I cannot remember the name of this colorway. <laughs> it's it driving me crazy. I don't know if I've written down it. I could go on her website and like look it up. Um, but it's annoying me that I just can't remember it. But it is this really lovely kind of blue with speckles of brown. And I personally love blue and brown together. That's one of my favorite color combos. So I originally brought this um, with another skein of a dark blue. And I was gonna try to use them as contrast, um, me and contrast colors for a project. They just didn't contrast enough. Um, I think it was for my long, long time pullover that I published last year, which is, um lice stitch which sounds yucky but it's basically like polka dot for knitters anyway um and they've just been sitting around since then i haven't really had anything you know to, to do with two skeins of dk weight yarn i was kind of saving them maybe they might work for a brioche um, but when i got the opportunity to test this i thought i've got that same yarn i may as well use it 
So I went ahead and cast on it. As you can see, I have made very little progress. I just cast on yesterday. Um, and I did that annoying thing where um, I squeezed the cast on onto um, a big kind of needle that's slightly too big and then you know kind of <laughs> forced the first round through and now it's fine well it's okay it's still it's still a little tight but um i'm knitting the size i want to say two which is like 33 inches um and this is like a 32 inch <laughs> needle total so it, it, it's still a little tight um but this was the only cable that I had available. And I definitely didn't want to squeeze all this onto a 16 inch circular needle. So there you have it. I have a new whip. Hopefully by the next podcast, uh, I will have this done and ready to show you guys. So um, uh, the pattern calls for using a US five for a gauge of five and a half stitches Per inch. Um, having worked with this yarn quite a bit, for me, I know that I need to use a US 6. That was another nice thing about using this yarn. I have used it um, quite a number of times for a variety of projects, so I really did not need to swatch. I already know my gauge with uh, Swanky DK. So this, um, if you're not familiar with Swanky DK, it is a merino cashmere nylon DK weight um, dyed by Magpie Fibers, which is right up in Frederick, Maryland. So that is the new project that I have cast on. I think that is all the whips that I have to tell you about. All right, I have a sewing update for you. Um, so if you are not interested in sewing, you can just kind of skip to the next segment. Um, but I am trying to teach my help, myself how to sew. I mean, you know, I'm watching videos and stuff, um, but um, it is kind of my new thing. It is exhausting trying to learn something new and just, it's really tiring to be bad at something. Um, you know, I mean, once upon a time I was bad at knitting, but, but now I'm not. And uh, it's, I've kind of forgotten how uh, just kind of mentally exhausting and frustrating it can be to be bad at something. And, um, one of the things I'm trying to do with the sewing is to just be kind of comfortable at being bad at it because I'm not going to get better at it without practicing. Um, and that means, you know, along the way, I'm going to make some projects that aren't great and I'm going to make some mistakes and I'm going to have to rip them out and things like that. So uh, I don't know if I had mentioned this before. I had, um, purchased a class on Craftsy to learn to sew and kind of let it sit around for a couple of years. Um, and then was it in May, late May, um, or it was me during me made May. I said, I'm finally going to sew something. And I sewed masks, um, for my family. And then I haven't done anything since then. Uh, my plan was to start this project that I'm going to show you earlier. And I thought I had purchased enough fabric for it, but it turns out I didn't. So I had to buy more fabric and, um, but finally, this project is well underway. In fact, I might finish it today. So I am knitting, knitting. <laughs> I am sewing this dress out of this beautiful, beautiful fabric, which far away, looks just kind of like a, a floral print. But when you look up close, it is yarn, themed. It's so cute. So you can see these balls of yarn, skeins of yarn, little granny squares, knitting needles, socks and sweaters. So I absolutely adore this yarn. Um, so that was the back because I wanted to be able to see the, the fabric really well. And here is the front. So what's going on up here is that I have pinned the armhole facings in and I'm going to sew them hopefully this afternoon. Um, and then the last thing I have to do is to hem the bottom. So it has an asymmetric hem line and 
and I did actually modify this just a little bit. I shortened it by about two inches and the pattern shows you uh, very helpfully where you can shorten it. Um, and so the original dress design fell, the front fell right below the knee and I find that to be very just unflattering. Um, so I shortened it about two inches so that the front does come up right above my knee, which is a much better look for me. Uh, I have tried it on. It does fit. Um, I have a, for store-bought dresses, I usually will run into a problem where like the, the upper part of the dress around the rib cage will be too tight. Just because my rib cage is kind of large in proportion to the rest of my body just have a particularly large rib cage. Um, so I was a little worried here. Obviously the whole point of sewing is that you can make clothes that fit you. But um, when I was looking at the pattern, I was really torn between the small and the medium. Ultimately I decided the medium was just gonna be too big. Um, I did like kind of look for some reviews of the pattern and a number of people said it was, um, it ran large. So that sort of made me think, all right, I will go ahead and do the small. Um, because looking at the finished measurements, it was still gonna have some ease at the bust. Um, and it does, it, it's, it fits fine in the bust, but it is a little tight around my butt, which has never happened to me before in the history of the world. And that I, that's not ever a problem I've had before. So I don't know what the deal is. Um, I mean, it still fits, it's just you know, tighter than I would have imagined. All right, so I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna show you guys my uh, really fashionable denim cutoff shorts here so that you can just get a better look at the dress. Okay, so just a little scoop neck and then this asymmetric headline. It does have a belt, I have to sew that. And it has pockets. I mean, basically, if I'm gonna sew dresses, they're all gonna have pockets. Um, so my pockets are definitely not perfect. They stick out a little bit. I'm hoping uh, ultimately uh, washing and maybe giving the dress a final pressing is gonna help with that uh, a little bit more. So armhole facings, I expect are gonna be tricky. Uh, the neckline was tricky. And it is definitely not perfect. And if I get up close here, you can see that it's, um, I mean, it's fine, but it's not, you know, perfectly straight. Um, I'm also not sure about the um, fusible interfacing that I bought. It seems a bit stiff. I mean, I know it's supposed to be sturdy, um, but it seems, especially like I'm watching the, the video, the craftsy class that I bought, she goes through every step of the dress. Um, and I'm watching her and her fusible interfacing seems a little bit more flexible and less crunchy. Hi. So um, that's something I maybe I should look into. Maybe there's better. I mean, I'm not going to change it now, but um, maybe for a future project. I'm not sure that the kind I bought is ideal. Um, so uh, this does have the bust darts and you can see a little bit the bust dart here. I did, um, when she was talking about the armhole facings, she was saying, you know, it's not always clear which part is the top and which part is the bottom. And I said, finally, knitting applies. I know what an armhole is shaped like. And I understand where the bottom and the top of the armhole are. So um, in general, uh, I think knitting, you can see a little pucker here in my neckline, right there. Um, you know, just kind of understanding the structure of garments has been helpful, but other than that, um, not a whole lot, at least with this project, not a whole lot of overlap between uh, knitting and sewing skills. Um, so I'm actually kind of hoping to finish that today. Um, like I said, it's just very exhausting trying to, trying to learn something new and 
dealing with not, you know, it not being perfect, um, especially for me. Maybe not everybody is like that. Um, the armholes I know are going to be tricky because they're curvy. Um, and that is, um, I've been doing pretty well with straight lines, but curvy lines I know are just, um, that's going to be tricky as I'm kind of mentally preparing myself for the fact that they're probably not going to be as nice as I would like. Um, but uh, overall, I'm so far very happy with that project. And what I'm planning on is for it to be my kind of fiber festival, maybe knitting class teaching dress um, that, um, you know, that I can wear to events like that where I know people will appreciate the fabric and uh, I think it's adorable. And then after that, I do have, I already have uh, several other patterns and, and some fabric that I have purchased. Uh, so hopefully I'm going to keep going with that. I've really been enjoying it, even though it is tiring and um, sometimes frustrating. Um, you know, obviously if I'm a knitter, I enjoy making my own clothes and this is kind of the next step and it's been great. events. I want to tell you guys all about the upcoming Sweater Along. Uh, this is now an annual event. I think this is the third or fourth one um, that uh, I have been running at the end of my Sweater Siren e-course, but it is open to everybody, not just my Sweater Siren students. And it is just basically a big sweater knit along that anybody can join in. Um, all you have to do is pick one of the Midia Kodawana Knits sweater patterns. There are 27 of them that are eligible and join in with us and knit a sweater to get ready for the fall. The sweater along will be kicking off on August 9th uh, and then it will run through October 15th, which is um, not only Rhinebeck weekend, but also my birthday. First, I prepare a schedule for every sweater along to just kind of help keep everyone on pace to actually finish their sweater during the sweater along, which is the, the whole point. Um, and that is just, you know, telling you at this point, how you should have this much finished and this point, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then I also sprinkle some challenges throughout the sweater along. So if you participate in those, it's usually something like share a photo of this or, you know, something like that. Um, you will also be entered for some kind of sort of smaller quick giveaway prizes. And then everybody who finishes the their sweater project during the sweater along um, and you know posts their finished photo and does all follows all those rules, everybody who finishes a sweater will get a new free sweater pattern from me. Um, it's one of the previous podcast episodes. I definitely can show you the yarn. <laughs> uh, I definitely talked about this that I'd started working on. Um, so everybody who finishes a sweater during the sweater along is going to get uh, a free copy of that pattern. And then there is also a big grand prize that one person who finishes their sweater is going to get. Um, 27 sweater patterns are eligible. The majority are available directly from me through either Ravelry or Payhip. There are a few that are um, currently only available, you know, for example, through Interweave. Um, but if you want to purchase through them or you, you know, already have those issues, that's fine too. You know, you don't have to buy a new pattern. You are encouraged to, if you would like to buy a new pattern, but if you already have a pattern, great. You certainly don't need to buy a new pattern to participate. Um, I will include a link in the description box down below to the um, all the details about the sweater along. As I said, it starts on August 9th. So when you're watching this, that's just a few weeks away. Um, it will be here before we know it. And again, runs through mid-October. So it's sort of a really nice sort of get ready for fall um, knit along that I always like to do because I always like to get, you know, get in that fall spirit. Um, long before fall even starts. By the time we get back from the beach, I'm, I'm ready. I'm done with summer. I'm, I'm almost done with summer now. It's so hot and mosquito-y. Um, so Sweater Along is coming. I encourage and invite you to participate. I will include that link below so you can find out all the details and 
when you visit that page, what you will find is a, um, a link to a quick start guide, which is basically an Excel spreadsheet with links to all of the sweater patterns that are eligible um, and breaking them down by you know, the style of the yoke, the weight of the yarn, the gauge, the size. So you can just look at it and say, you know what, I want to knit a pullover in worsted weight yarn and with raglan sleeves. And you can look on there and say, hey, this is the perfect one. Um, and uh, definitely the Going Steady cardigan pattern is going to be updated and published by the time uh, that the sweater long starts. So if you have been interested in that one, that one will be ready. Um, so I hope to see you there. If you have any questions about the sweater long, you can just comment uh, on this video and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So I'm gonna add a little, chatterbox in here not that you know a whole ton has been going on uh it's hot skaters are gone <laughs> uh, that is the big thing for me um of course now it's a lot of days too hot to really go outside what is it today 89 today so that's not it was definitely hotter yesterday and it was so humid i mean it always is in maryland but uh, it was exceptionally disgusting yesterday. Um, the skates are gone, and I can, when the weather isn't too disgusting, I can now you know, go outside and take a walk. Um, I have uh, been to the pool. I promised to take my children to the zoo tomorrow. Uh, unfortunately, it is still going to be 90 degrees, but, you know, with a heat, in heat index of... God knows what, but uh, yeah, so I am finally able to go outside again a little bit. Uh, my poor garden, I did plant it uh, in May and then the cicadas came and I basically neglected it uh, for almost six weeks and um, part of it is my fault. Uh, this is the first year that I tried to grow everything from seed. I had got grow lights. But the containers I used were really just too small, so my plants really did not get big enough and sturdy enough before I transplanted them. So all of the tomato plants are still there um, and have gotten reasonably large, but have no flowers. Um, I want to say two of the five pepper plants died, but three are still there and uh, again are reasonably sized, no flowers, although I did see some flower buds, I think, on one. Most of the zucchini died. What's left is pathetic. All of my cucumber died except for one, and I could direct sow those again, so I might do that. Um, one winter squash, I don't know if it's a butternut squash or a spaghetti squash, is doing really well. Um, no fruit, but it has a giant flower, and the vine itself looks very healthy. Um, and the snap peas, I had planted them and you can usually direct sow them. Um, but then I kind of abandoned them and they didn't vine on their own. I don't, it's a, it's a different variety. I usually don't have that much trouble with them, but they didn't, I put the, the trellises there, but they didn't vine on their own. They just fell down and grew on the ground. So, uh, I may try a second round of those, um, later in the summer for a fall harvest, but other than that, my garden is not looking good. My dye plants, uh, something, I had them in the backyard and the dog was getting into them, so I um, decided to move them to our front yard and something ate them, everything. There's one, I had like four different varieties. I had co uh, Tango Cosmos, I had Double Black Hollyhock, Black Knight Scabiosa, I think I had five, Coreopsis and Chamomile. And one thing is left, I don't know what it is because the rain washed <laughs> the ink away off the marker um, and everything else got eaten. So that is also a bummer. I'm starting to feel like a dye garden is not <laughs> in my future. Um, but again, I neglected things a lot with the cicadas here, so maybe if I hadn't been hiding in the house for six weeks, 
things would be doing better. Although I don't think I could have done much about what I suspect is a rabbit eating the dye plants. I even put a net over it, but it wasn't, I guess, quite big enough. Anyway, um, so basically gardening this year, not going well. Um, my hair saga continues. I'm still trying to figure out how to get it to stay in. Um, you can see it has collapsed considerably since I started. I don't mind this, I kind of just want it to be wavy, but I'm still surprised that it has fallen down quite so much. So, um, someone suggested, I say it was uh, Karina Spencer on Instagram, because um, I was <laughs> whining about my hair troubles, um, suggested using like a texturizing paste or something along those lines. Um, so what I decided to do was, first the, the thermal spray that I had wasn't a whole spray, it was just a protectant. So I decided to replace that with a, a, a thermal spray that is also a hold spray. So it's supposed to protect my hair and help it hold. So I spray that on first, and then when I'm done, um, I put some of the texturizing paste or balm or whatever it is um, on my fingers and then you know, finger comb out the curls because I don't want curls, I want waves. Um, and then kind of scrunch that a little bit in. And uh, I was thinking it was working kind of, but today it seems to have fallen down a little bit. What I might try next time I wash my hair is to right after I wash it, put some of the texturizing paste in or balm in. Um, Cause I almost always let my hair air dry. Put that in and let it dry with that. So I'm starting with some texture uh, and then go from there. So still learning how to do my hair. Um, and by the time I figure it out, I'll probably be, be done with having short hair. I don't, it's so much work is why I don't get, that's why I don't have short hair. Um, Cause when my hair is long, I will usually do something for like special occasions. I'll either, you know, curl it or straight flat iron it. But generally I just let it air dry and then brush it and that's all I do. I don't have the patience for um, having to put a lot of effort into my hair. Um, I do like how it looks like short and wavy like this, but it just takes so much work. So I will probably one more time before the end of the summer have them um, shape it back up and then I'll probably just let it grow out once the fall comes and I'm not so hot anymore. Um, so we'll see, it's still a fun experiment. Um, other than that, not a ton going on here. We didn't really do much. You know, we went to my dad's for the 4th of July, but we did not, um, we could see some fireworks a little bit from his house, but we didn't, um, go anywhere to specifically to see the fireworks. Um, we did spend a week on vacation at, uh, Deep Creek Lake, which is out in Western Maryland. Um, it was fine. I like the beach better. What happened was my sister and I have been trying to push to, to my dad and my husband to do a two week vacation in the summer because um, it's a long drive to the Outer Banks, um, about six hours. And that's, we go either on a Friday or a Sunday because a Saturday it's, it's impossible, like nine hours with the traffic. Um, so we specifically look for a house that has um, what's called a turn day on either a Friday or a Sunday so that we can be a little bit shorter. Um, but even so, six hours, you know, especially for my dad, he's, um, he'll be 74 this year. It's a, it's a long drive. Um, and it is such a long drive um, that, you know, two weeks at the beach would be, would make it a little bit more reasonable, I think, and my sister thinks. Um, yeah, my dad's a teacher. Well, he's supposed to be retiring, <laughs> but he's a teacher. So he's, you know, his vacation is during the summer. He can't just kind of take off at other random times of the year, really. Um, and um, the 
kids, you know, are off school in the summer, so it's we, we have the time. It's not like taking a you know two week vacation in January. Um, it just would make more sense, at least from our perspective, to to extend that vacation and make it longer. But neither my dad or my husband would agree to doing two weeks in a row. Um, and so what we decided to do this year was to take two separate one week vacations. Uh, during the summer. And so we went to the lake house um, in the end of June, and then we're going to go to the beach house at the very end of July, early August. Um, so the lake was cicada free. There were no cicadas. That was, I don't know why, because it's still in Maryland. Um, and just like in kind of Cumberland, Maryland, which is maybe an hour outside, there were plenty of cicadas there, but for whatever reason, the cicadas don't go to Deep Creek. So there were no cicadas and it was so much cooler. Um, I mean, one night uh, we were sitting outside doing uh, s'mores and I was so chilly that I took the sweater that I was working on, it was the test knit, and I put it on with one sleeve still on the needles. I was so chilly. Um, we do not have cool summer evenings in Maryland. Uh, or at least in central Maryland, um, but it was so much cooler out there because it is in the mountains, um, you know, and if it's even during the day, you know, with the bright sun, it can get warm, but it, it, it was cool at night um, on quite a number of the nights and it was not humid. So those, those parts were very nice. Um, the lake, you can do boating. So you can do like jet skis or tubing, um, canoeing, you have to rent all those things. And it's very expensive. I mean, to rent, if you wanted to rent a um, boat for like a week, it would cost more than renting a house for the week, almost as much. Um, so we kind of toyed with the idea of renting canoes and then ultimately it just didn't work out. You know, the timing didn't work out. Um, so if we decide to go again, maybe we would look into that. We just ran to the Walmart and bought some big, big inner tubes and, and tossed them in the lake and floated around on them just by the little, the little docks that were by our, um, our cabin, I guess you could call it. Um, and it's, you know, it's not super crowded out there. It's relatively quiet. Um, the house itself had like a game room, so play ski ball and air hockey and pool. Um, so it was, it was nice, but I definitely still prefer the beach. Um, but still, especially after all of 2020, it was nice to just get away and and go out and and relax so we did that but we've been back for several weeks and july is really a pretty chill month for us um this weekend will be my husband's 45th birthday um next weekend will be i signed up to go to a networking kind of brunch for the National Capital Area Translators Association. I'm really not good at like networking stuff and and talking to people. Um, I'm just, I'm not good at small talk and I'm not good at starting conversations. I'm rather socially awkward, but I know it would probably be a good opportunity to do some networking. So we'll see if I actually talk myself into going or not. And then the weekend after that, we're at the beach. Uh, and then when I come back from the beach, it is the sweater along. So don't forget to look into the details for that. You don't have to sign up or anything. Just pick a pattern and join us. Thank you so much for joining me for episode 43 of the Elo and Stitch podcast. You can find show notes with links to everything that I talked about in this episode at mediaperuana.com slash Elo and Stitch. Special thank you to my Patreon patrons whose support helps keep this podcast and the whole Media Peruana Knits YouTube channel up and running. 
Uh, so if you would like to support the podcast and channel and get some perks and freebies and behind the scenes goodies, you can find more information at patreon.com slash media peruana. Here on YouTube, if you could like, comment, share, subscribe, all of those things really help expand the reach of the channel so that we can uh, go out there and make some more new knitters. Uh, if you're looking for me on social media, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as media peruana. And I will see you next time.